So here's that pediment that um, we're going to build here. It's going to look just like that one in the drawing that you saw a second ago. And I've screwed a couple of blocks to the back of it with pocket screws so it'll stand up here. And these are the angles we picked, 150 degrees here, 30 degrees here. And I wanted to go through this real quickly. This is a piece of the 1x4 we're going to use for the cap on the very top. And here's a piece of the crown molding that we're going to use that's going to run underneath the cap just like this. So let's look at these two pieces of molding a little bit closer. The cap, when it comes up to the outside corner at the very peak, the short point of that miter is going to be against this backboard, against the pediment. Conversely, when the cap runs down into this inside corner, the long point of this miter is going to be an inch against the pediment. The long point of the miter is going to be against the pediment and up against the back of the molding. So it'll fit tight against that corner. And that's something to really pay attention to because it's going to make it much easier and faster to cut these miters and it'll guarantee that the direction you cut them in will be right. Now, there's a couple other things I want to just look at real quick. When we cut this molding, we want to make sure that the uh, molding always stays in one direction against the fence. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the good side, that would be this side of the molding, against the fence. And that means it would be against my pediment as well, so that the good side would be visible from underneath. And then the side with the print on it, the side with the Windsor One logo will be pointing up, and the flashing will cover that. So I'll always keep the good side against my fence. And the last thing I want to show you is when this molding comes across the wing here, it needs to project out past the wing far enough to catch this crown molding. Here's the crown molding. It projects about an inch and a half. So we're going to want to make sure that this wing, when it comes across here, projects out about two inches past this edge of the pediment. Now this molding, let's take a closer look at this too. This is Windsor One's classical craftsman cap, and it's a really neat molding. I've ripped it down here. I ripped about, oh, half an inch or so off of it. Oh, I think about an inch actually off of it, right off the back, and you can see it right here. I've ripped off enough so that we won't have this big wide fillet anymore. All we need is just a small fillet here, about three-eighths or a half an inch. See, this wide fillet is designed so that you can take this molding and install it right on top of a pediment. But in this case, since we're going to put this cap right on top, we want this molding to sit right against the pediment, just like this. So that's why I ripped it down. It's a really nice molding. I don't know anyone else that makes a molding like this. If you look at this closely, you'll notice that all of these fillets are cut really sharp. And you can see this OG from almost any direction in a room, so it's a really beautiful profile. And the curve on the OG, if you look at the curve right here, you'll notice that this isn't a radius. It's not based on a radius. It's based on an ellipse, which makes it a real Greek molding, which is, makes a lot of sense. We're doing a Greek revival head. We want to use an elliptical molding, so it would kind of emphasize the Greek revival look. And this piece is just perfect for it. I don't know another molding manufacturer in the country that manufactures this piece. Matter of fact, I had a knife made for this molding for my Woodmaster so that I could run some of this stuff in stain grade when I need to. So now we're ready to figure out what the length of these pieces are. This piece here, we know that one's two inches further than the wing. That would make it eight inches. And this, we figured the math pretty closely on this. This piece should measure 12 and, let me get that again, 12 and 11 sixteenths. And on this side, it's 12 and a strong, almost just, oh, it's more like 5 eighths, but let's make them both 12 and 11 sixteenths, and that way our joinery will be perfect. If the, if the cap doesn't sit snug against the top of this pediment everywhere, it's perfectly okay because this molding is going to cover everything once we install it. So we're ready to cut these pieces, and we can bring them back and pre-install and pre-assemble them. Okay now, this is the good side, and this is the prime side with the prime all cuts, with the Windsor One logo. So we're going to take the good side, we're going to put it against the fence, because the fence is the same surface as the edge of that backboard, as the edge of the pediment board. So we know that this piece here needs a butt cut on the right side, and it needs to be 8 inches long, 6 inches because the pediment wing is 6 inches, and an extra two inches so that we have some overhang for the crown molding. Now I'm going to pull the saw in this direction. That first angle is 15 degrees, so I'm going to set my saw at 15. I'm going to turn on the laser here 
It'll make it go a little bit faster. And so there's the first cut. Now the second one, in order to mate with that miter, I have to swing the saw to 15 degrees in the opposite direction. And now we're climbing up that ridge so I can take this piece, flush it up with the edge of my auxiliary fence here, and pull a measurement. And that was 12 and 11 sixteenths. And that is to an outside corner. And it's not 15, it's at 30 degrees for the top of that ridge. So I'll pull the saw to 30. And that's a short point for the, out that's a short point for the outside corner. And the next cut has to mate with that miter, so I swing the saw to 30 degrees. And that's in the opposite direction on the other side of 90. And now I can pull this measurement by flushing up the short point of this piece. Remember, it's an outside corner, so it's a short point. Flushing up the short point, making that measurement again at 12 and 11 sixteenths. And I have to change the angle of my miter saw. Remember, we're going back down now, back down that pediment, back down the peak of that pediment to the 15 degree angle. So I'll pull my saw to 15 on the same side of 90 as that 30 degree cut was because these cuts are kind of parallel. And we have one more piece to cut. First, we have to cut the mating miter to come out of that inside corner because that inside corner is the last one we had to cut and we want to pull from there eight inches to the back of this molding and this now is a butt cut well that finishes all of the pieces going up and down the cap but we still have one more piece we want to cut, and that's the two pendants that we're going to put right on the face of that pediment. I want to cut a little point on the end of this. I'm going to swing the saw to 45, and I want to cut just a point on the very end of this, and it'll give it that gothic look that is really familiar on Italianate and a lot of Victorian homes. I've got a mark on my saw right here, and that should center the blade right in the middle of that piece of 1x4. I can just flip my saw over and put it right back on the mark. One there and one here. One on the fence, one on the front of the saw. And that'll keep this mark centered right on the, across the 1x4. And then I've got another mark right here that I'm just going to eyeball that and line that up with. Swing the saw to 90. And that's one of the pennants. And I'll cut one more. all we need to put the cap on the top. All right, I've got all my ducks in a row, all the pieces in perfect order. Now I'm going to glue them together. I like to pre-assemble this stuff. I'm going to use some 2P10 here and just, I'm using the gel so it doesn't run so much. I think I'll put it onto this piece. And I'll spray the other pieces with activator and just make sure that I keep the activator away from my skin here. There we go. And now I can put these together. And I'm going to do is I'm just going to hinge these joints closed. And that way I'll get nice tight miters. The joints will be perfect. I prefer doing it this way and pre-assembling the joints rather than putting the pieces together one at a time on the pediment. Because then I'd have to follow the pediment. It would have to be cut just perfectly. The joints probably wouldn't come out as well. This way I get a really nice clean miter. And and it goes together very quickly. Let me get these miters together. It's 2P10, so it's a two-part 10-second glue, but when it's brand new, it's more like 2P2. 
So you want to be careful when you're putting it together. Keep moving your fingers around because it'll get stuck to your work table. And I'm just lining up the long points here on these miters and then putting some pressure on them. It, sometimes it takes 15 seconds, sometimes it takes 10. It really depends on how old the glue is and the temperature and all kinds of other things. But it's a really good way to pre-assemble your moldings. Um, before you put this onto yours, make sure that you put some yellow glue in here. And I'm gonna, just going to take this, get it in place here, get it flush with the back, and then just tack it right to the backboard. Now we're ready to cut these moldings. We know that this piece right here is going to have a butt joint on the back. It's going to be cut square in the back, and it's going to have an outside corner on it right here. This piece, the next piece, is going to have an outside corner to meet it, and it's going to have an inside corner where it comes up against the pendant right here. Then the next piece will have an inside corner on that same joint to an outside corner on the face of the pendant, and it'll just keep on walking its way across the, the face of the pediment. We don't want to shoot this down here though, even though we know this piece is going to be three quarters of an inch. We don't want to shoot this in place because this piece might not be exactly three quarters. And if we don't shoot this in place, we can go ahead and pre-assemble all those little moldings and let them determine, let them force the position for this pendant. So let's go cut those moldings right now. This is really crown molding. It may not look like it, but it is. It's solid in the back which is different than most crown molding. Most crown molding is back cut here, just back cut right across here, and there isn't this piece of wood right back in here. So that it'll span from the wall up to the ceiling and miss any kind of irregularities in the drywall mud. But this piece of solid crown molding has to be cut exactly like regular crown molding. You never put crown molding into a saw right side up, just like this, because if you do, when you bring the blade of the saw down to the molding, It'll tip a little bit, it'll wiggle a little bit, just as you're starting to cut it, and your cuts won't be precise. So with crown molding, and even the solid crown molding, you always turn it upside down, so that it'll sit nice and tight and flat against your fence and the uh, base of your saw wire cutting it. But that's not the only reason that you turn crown molding upside down. The reason I really like to turn crown molding upside down is because the measurements are always made and taken at the bottom of crown molding, never at the top. Well, there's one exception, when you're running crown molding up a rake, and we're going to get to that in just a few minutes on this Greek, Greek, uh, Greek revival pediment. But right now, all we have to think about, and most of the time all you have to worry about, is cutting crown on a regular ceiling, in which case all of your measurement marks are always made on the bottom of the molding. So if you turn the crown molding upside down at your saw, it's much easier to guide the blade right to your measurement mark and cut precisely. And that's what we're going to do. And that's going to mean that this end of the crown is really, since we've turned it upside down, this end right here is really the left-hand end. And the left-hand end on the very first piece we want to cut needs a butt cut, just like we talked about when we were standing over at that pediment. So I'm going to cut a regular 90 degree butt cut off this end. Now, the next corner is an outside corner, and this piece has to measure 3 quarters of an inch to stretch across the edge of the pediment, the very edge of the pediment. I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to flush it up with my fence here, and I've got a three-quarter inch mark right on the fence, so all I have to do is transfer that mark onto my piece of crown and make that cut. And I'm going to pull my saw in this direction just to get everything lined up when I get started on this, because once I get started, I'm going to move the material in the same direction every time, and I'm going to really move along pretty fast. But I want to get myself set up first so I don't make a mistake right from the beginning. This cut to go around that pediment, that edge of that pediment, has to be an outside corner. And just like we talked about, for an outside corner, we want the short point of the miter. And if I drop the saw here, you'll see what I mean. The short point of the miter will be at the back of this molding, right on that measurement mark. Here, I'll put the blade right near the mark. I'm going to turn the laser on for the saw, and I'll be able to move a lot quicker. Now the next piece has to have a mating miter, so I have to swing the saw to 45 degrees in the opposite direction. And 
this piece is three quarters of an inch too. And it's cut from an outside corner to an inside corner. So I don't swing the saw. This is running molding. I don't swing the saw, and you noticed with that laser, I don't really have to even look too closely at the measurement. I can drop that laser right on the measurement and make my cut. Now, the next cut has to mate up with this piece. So to cut a mating miter, I have to swing the saw back to 45 degrees in this direction. This is an inside corner to outside corner piece. It's going to come up right against that pennant we already cut. That's that piece. Now the next piece has to mate up with that. So I'm going to swing the saw back. And that'll be the mating miter that comes around the pendant. So this piece has to be three and a half inches. And yeah, I've got another mark right on my fence here at three and a half inches. Putting measurement marks on your fence like this allows you to go twice as fast. You don't have to pull out your tape measure and you very rarely make any mistakes. So I have to pull my saw in the opposite direction because this is an outside corner to an outside corner piece. I'll line up that laser on the mark. And there's that piece. So now we're up around the edge of the pendant here. Now we're across the face of the pendant. Now we have to come back along the edge of the pendant. This is the mating miter for this piece. Now this next piece has to be 3 quarters of an inch. So I'll line this up again with the edge of my fence and drop my saw through that. that piece. Now we have one more piece that comes out from right here. It's going to come across the face of that freeze board, the face of the, pe of the pediment itself. And to mate up with this miter, I have to swing the saw in the opposite direction. So there we go. There's the piece that's going to come across the face of the pediment. Now this is just a little short piece and this is actually the transition piece. It's going to go from flat molding, molding that's running on the flat, to molding that's running up the rake. So let's just leave this piece go for a second. We're not going to pre-assemble this. It's only going to end up being maybe about that long, but it's going to take a special cut, and we'll figure that out in just a few minutes. Right now, let's take these pieces of the table here, and we'll pre-assemble all of these. All right, there's all those pieces. I want to keep them in order just the way I cut them, just in case. I'll tell you why. I've done this before. And if you mix them up at all, there's a little piece stuck on the bottom of that one. If you mix them up at all, you'll, never, you'll spend all kinds of time trying to figure out which piece goes where. So we're going to leave them in the order they're at. And I'm going to take the 2P10 and I'll put a little bit of glue on both of these outside corners. And I'll spray this piece. And then I'll spray this one. So I'll put a little bit of glue on both sides of this piece. Just a little round dot. That's plenty. Keep your fingers out of it. So I'm through with the glue. Now I'll take the spray and I'll spray this piece. Just hold it out of the way. And this piece here gets sprayed on both sides. I don't want to spray too close to the other pieces or I might touch the, get the spray on the glue. There we go. So everything's sprayed up. So I'll take this piece here. We'll put this on. There's that corner. Get a nice tight joint there. And then we'll get this one on. There we go. And we'll put this one on here. Oh, that's not quite lined up. There we go. That's better. And we'll get this one on. Oh, look how that sticks. That glue is very powerful stuff. We'll put this one together and get that one on there. That's it. Now we're ready to assemble this. Now we can take 
this piece. Remember, it's upside down, so we can turn it right side up, and we can put our little pendant into it, and it goes in just like so. And then we can use the whole piece of crown molding to locate where the pendant goes. So we'll just take that piece of crown, we'll just slide it over until this end right here butts up against the end of the pediment, and that's where it goes. You can put some glue underneath this, definitely glue all this together. I'm just going to take this and just tack it together real quick so we can see what this is going to look like. There's the next piece. It fits just perfect into this inside corner, but remember this time, since we're going up the gable end, we're going to mark it at the top of the molding, right there. Right where the ceiling change is playing. This is really the trick here. This is a transitional piece. Just like the transitional piece you use in a cathedral ceiling, it's going to change the plane of the crown from a flat ceiling to a rake ceiling. And this is exactly the same thing you do with baseboard. When you're running baseboard along a wall, you always set it in your saw right side up against the fence of the saw the same way it's going to sit on the wall. But when you want to run down a step, you always have to lay it back down flat and cut it on the flat so that the miter will go down, down the stairs. So this piece here will come into here, and all we want is this little out inside corner here and a small outside corner here cut at 15 degrees. And fortunately, we have just enough material left on this piece. The mark is right here, so there's oh about 3 sixteenths of an inch left here. If I had designed this wrong, and if this mark had been back here past the short point, I'd be sunk. All right, we've got this mark on here, and that's going to help us a lot right now. I'll show you why. When you cut crown molding, you don't cut it right side up like this. You always turn it upside down like so, so you can see your measurement mark right on the bottom of the crown. But let's put it right side up for just a minute because when you cut baseboard, you always cut baseboard standing up, right side up, right up against your fence. Except when you cut baseboard going down a step. When you cut it going down a step, you're mitering in a different plane, so you have to take the molding and roll it back flat against the saw. So that's what we're going to do with this crown. Imagine right here, it's in position the way it'll be on that pediment or on the wall. And when we want to cut this little piece right here, we're going to take this molding and roll it back flat against the saw, just like we would baseboard. So this cut is going to be made right to this mark. And this mark, having a mark there, makes it much easier on the brain to figure out exactly which position this material has to be in. Obviously, that measurement mark has to be up where it's in the wrong position. And now we know which way to swing the saw, too. I'm going to swing the saw to 15 degrees in this direction so that I can cut an outside corner miter on this piece and have the short point at the back of the molding, right at that mark. And there is the piece we want. And not only that, notice how we're now moving the material in the opposite direction. I'm sliding the material now from this side of the saw, from my right to my left. And that isn't something I do very often, only when I'm going up and down gable ends. I always move my material from my left to my right, except when I'm going up and down gable ends. And then I'm forced to move the material in this direction. And that means I'm going to keep moving in that direction. So I know, in order to make the mating miter for the next piece, I've got to swing the saw to 15 degrees in the opposite direction, which would be right here. And I can make that cut right now. There we go. So we're ready to cut this piece, too. And this piece, we already know the measurement on. This piece measures 12 and 11 sixteenths. So I can mark it right here. And I've got to swing the saw in the opposite direction. Oh, I've got to swing the saw in the same direction, right? To keep it on the same side of 90 because these are running moldings. This is an outside corner, this is an inside corner. So this saw, now the saw has to swing to 30 degrees in the same direction, and that now is an inside corner miter with the long point at 
the back of the molding. There we go. Now we got both those pieces. Okay, here's that little piece. We're going to slide that in here. Goes in just like that. Perfect. Now all I'm going to do is just tack this in place. And we've got that next piece cut too. So all I have to do is take this piece and run it right up in here. And look at that. That fits just fine. It fits just fine. So I can tack this in too. And that's really all there is to it. Just come back down this uh, end of the gable the same way. And actually, if it were me, I'd start over here on this side, do the pendant, and work my way all the way around the pendant first, and get all those pieces pre-assembled the same way I did this end, and then work this transition and the last piece up the gable at the very end. As you can see, there isn't a lot to one of these Greek Revival heads. Even one that has this Gothic element, this an Italianate kind of element to it, can be done very quickly if you use the right techniques.